Um, Richards Bay is uh, home to one of the largest and busiest harbors in southern Africa, and it currently handles up to around about 70% of the country's shipping, import, and export. To handle this, or uh, to handle the, the the largest of ships, the the main channel had to be dredged to around about 20 meters, which increased the tidal exchange and the, um, then thus um, increasing the seawater intrusion. As a consequence, oh, the uniqueness of Riches Bay Harbour is that it is one of the few coastal inlets along KZN coast that hosts huge areas of natural habitat, including um, three species of mangroves, intertidal mud and sand, uh, sand flats. Thus, thus, the system um, possesses a good portion of its original estuarine nature and functioning. As a consequence to the Riches Bay Harbour, the construction, the two estuarine sections rem that remained were canalised, forming the Bozolo and the Mzingazi uh, Canal. The Bozolo and the tributary, the Manzanyama Canal, um, has or possesses essential nursery areas for juvenile marine fish and uh, prawn species, and but at the same time is highly polluted as a result of direct discharging of industrial effluents. The Bazolo Canal has uh, has been recorded to house one of the highest concentrations of heavy metals, including copper, aluminium, chromium, and iron. And just to note that um, further in the study, which has not been done yet, there is a uh, heavy metal analysis which, uh, which will be included as well. The Mzingazi Canal, on the other hand, is not considered polluted and receives fresh water from Lake Mzingazi. Before harbour construction, um, in the original estuarine system, there were two zooplankton communities found. Um, one where the marine zooplankton dominated the channel from the mouth leading to um, oh, from the channel at, uh, at the channel from leading from the mouth at high tide and a true estuarine zooplankton dominating the uh, the lagoon and these two communities were um, controlled by tidal exchange currently in the Riches Bay harbor uh, recent studies have found that the two estuarine the two canals retain some estuarine nature, and that salinity was a primary factor in um, influencing these communities. There was also an, an alien invasive species found throughout the harbour, and it may be that uh, these abundances are increasing. Polluted estuaries have been found to impact the, the zooplankton distribution and abundance within those uh, systems. Um, just an example, in the eutrophic Kingston Harbour in Jamaica, the community composition and species dominance was found as a reliable indicator to the, uh, for the identifi identification of pollution. Problem statement. The original Riches Bay system was modified into a deep water harbour where only, uh, only remnants of the original estuarine system remain as modified canal systems. The, zoo, uh, the Pizzolo Canal is polluted by industrial effluents, which may affect the zooplankton communities of these systems. And uh, no study has been done on the zooplankton community of these two systems, and thus the present study aims to address the paucity of this information. The aims were to determine and compare the zooplankton communities, structures of these two estuary remnants, and to relate the zooplankton community structures of the present study to the physiochem data and nutrient concentrations. Here we have uh, the study area. Um, this is uh, the Riches Bay Harbour and the adjacent Fatuzi Estuary, the so-called uh, sanctuary. In the western end of the harbour, we can find, we can see the Bazolo Canal. Um, it is characterized by thick mangrove fringes and um, a muddy bottom. It has a, a tributary, the um, Zengazi um, Manzanyama Canal, which joins to the lower reaches at 90 degrees. Um, the, the mouth of the Bazolo Canal 
opens onto the Kabulia Flats, which is a large intertidal mud flat uh, that holds characteristics of the original Riches Bay system. On the northern end of the harbour, we found the Mzingazi Canal, and uh, it is characterised by open sandy banks lined by terrestrial vegetation on higher ground. Um, it, it is uh, known to have an estuarine nature, influencing a freshwater influence coming from Lake Mzingazi and a marine influence um, intruding straight from the sea. Um, you can see in total there are six sites, three within the Bazolo Canal, three within the Mzingazi Canal. Zooplankton sampling will, uh, was conducted after dark and uh, synchronized with high tide. Um, the samples will be collect, uh, were collected on a monthly basis for 12 months, from March 2011 to February 2012. I'll just mention the sites. The sample collection will be, uh, was done using a plankton, uh, double plankton net, like the one shown here in the picture. It was fitted with a, a flow meter to then um, calculate the, the volume of water sampled. And uh, the net was then deployed um, obliquely in the water for three minutes, three minute trawls. The physiochem variables were, uh, were, uh, were measured for surface and bottom water at each site using a YSI multi probe. One near surface water sample was uh, collected per site throughout the study period and sent to Mtlatuzi water for nutrient analyses. Nutrients included nitrates, nitrites, uh, nitrogen um, ammonia, and uh, arthrophosphates. In the laboratory, a standard method for processing zooplankton was conducted where the plankton were identified and counted to the nearest taxon and expressed as uh, numbers per cubic meter. Univariate and multivariate statistical and correlation analyses was done using PRIMA. Out of the, the uh, physiochem data, um, temperature and salinity were the most, uh, were, were the, uh, most important variables found even in previous studies. So I've decided just to concentrate on the two. Um, temperature, you can see, doesn't very, very much between canals. Um, there is a definitely a, um, a sign of seasonal differences. Um, the Pozzolo Canal was uh, definitely higher throughout the... Uh, temperatures were a bit higher throughout the Pozzolo Canal, throughout the period, study period. Salinity, on the other hand, is very variable between, um, between the two canals, especially in the Bazolo Canal, where we see, in um, take note of this, though, in, in April and in spring of BZ1 and BZ2. Although we found uh, in September in the Mzingazi Canal there was a uh, freshwater inflow. Uh, water nutrients as well. I've just concentrated on one which uh, sort of gave the overall picture of, of what happened throughout uh, all the water nutrients that were collected, were measured. And um, take note of the high concentrations in the BZ1, just below 125 milligrams per liter of arthrophosphates recorded specifically, well, they came in with these uh, freshwater inflows at, uh, in August, uh, sorry, April and in September. And we see this here in BZ3 as well, and in spring. Um, the um, Zagazi Canal, you can see, averaged around maximum one milligrams per liter. Now we jump into the stats, and I've provided a graphical illustration of uh, the, the results. And um, this is what came out, the cluster which I've grouped per site. So we see here in the cluster, BZ1 and BZ2 have a very strong um, similarity. And um, compared to the um, Zingazi Canal sites, and you can see BZ3, 
is more uh, very closely related to the Mzangazi Canal. On the MDS, the two-dimensional, we see the sort of the same picture, and um, BZ2 and BZ1 very closely related compared to the rest of the sites. And there's BZ3 more related to the Mzangazi Canal. Water nutrients, I did the same, provided um, uh, groupings per site. And we see how the excluded BZ1 is from the rest of the sites and BZ2 following sort of intermittently. Um, here on the MDS two-dimensional, we see how excluded BZ1 is compared to the rest of the sites. The community analysis, uh, I provided the full cover from uh, throughout all sites throughout the whole season. And it's a bit complicated, but all I want you to note is that 40% similarity, there were two main groups, and this is shown in the MDS, where I've overlaid at 40% uh, the two groups, and uh, color-coded the uh, green and the blue, BZ1 and BZ2. You can see how they form the aggregated on the edge of this one group, followed by MZ, MZ1, which is the red, and MZ2, the purple, form in the middle, and on the outer edge of the other grouping is uh, BZ3 and MZ3. What I, do, what I did here was I grouped the same data, but according to sites, just to simplify things, because it was a bit uh, clustered. And what we get here is sort of the same answer, but a bit more summarized. And where we, we see BZ1 and BZ2 very similar compared to the rest of the sites. And this is shown as well on the MDS, where BZ1 and BZ2 very strong relationship. Um, I'll jump into the, the species and uh, concentrate just on the dominant species. I'll look at Acarciella natalensis. It is the most dominant of all the species. I found um, it was the highest, um, most abundant recording at about 15,000, just under 15,000 individuals per, per meter cubed. And this was in the Bazolo Canal. It, it also contributed 52% to the total community structure within the system. It preferred this fresher water, this fresh and high nutrient water, which came in, especially here in April, when I, uh, I related you guys to, to the water, the orthophosphates, and here in, in um, September as well. You can see this relationship in BZ1 and BZ2. Sorry. Um, and another estron, Kellenwood Copper Pot, Pseudodioptima still money. Um, its density is varied slightly between canals, but um, it sort of favored the Bazolo um, Nzimgazi Canal with uh, densities ranging just below 6,000. A coastal marine Copper Pot was also dominant. And it was um, varied greatly between canals. And uh, densities were higher in the Bazolo Canal. And here as well, it shares the same relationship with A. natalensis, where in April and in spring, there were high densities in um, the BZ1 and BZ2. The marine copepod, Otona species, very greatly as well between canals. Um, this species was the highest recorded species within the Mzingazi Canal, making it the dominant species in that system. Now we get to an interesting one, an alien invasive species, Akasha spinicorda. Um, in 2003, the first study was uh, the first uh, a study done on the inv um, um, on the invasive um, biota brought in by the hullage in, in the hullage of the ships that's been released into the harbour, and it found that the species Acacia spinicorda had um, quite uh, um, was was quite dumb, um, well was 
sort of increasing in density slightly. And um, in this, in this um, graph, you can see how the, the species sort of just disappeared and into winter and completely never recovered until pretty late at the end of the sampling um, sessions. And this may be due to um, um, competition or yeah, um, definitely competition. So, and the densities were highest in the Mzingazi Canal. Yeah. I just want to go over the NSM statistical analysis. Because the two groups were so closely overlaid, I did a, a two-way cross um, over sites and months, and they were both uh, showed a significant difference between community structures. In this uh, power chart, you can see, demonstrate um, the, the two dominant species here, A. A natalensis, contributing around 52% to the community in the Bazaar Canal, and Oitona species, uh, contributing roughly around 40% in the Mzingazi Canal. Um, the community Simpa, where that resulted in ba back, backing up this pie chart by providing um, A. natalensis and Otoina as the two species that contributed the most differences between the canals. Here we have the Shannon Diversity Index, and clearly you can see the BZ1, um, Bazaar Canal and Zangazi Canal, and there's clear uh, the difference between the diversities in the two systems. And um, as I've been mentioning, April and spring, you can see these with these inflows of fresh water, you can see how the densities drop. This may correlate to the high levels of nutrients or the fresh water that comes in. To conclude, it is safe then to say that the Bazaar Canal differs from the Mzingazi Canal in terms of mesozooplankton community and environmental variables. Statistically, there was no correlation between uh, any of them, uh, the, between the community and environmental variables. We're going to be taking this a bit further and analyzing the dominant species to each uh, environmental variable. Um, then statistically showed um, well, salinity is shown to be the major factor in both uh, canals. Nutrients also played a very important role in the Bazaar Canal, specifically for A. natalensis, where these uh, abundances correlated to uh, the influx of uh, high, high nutrients. An alien invasive species, A. spinicorda, um, the, the abundances have definitely increased from, um, from what I've looked at in previous studies. And, um, but it seems that these densities are controlled by competition. And that is all, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks very much, Kent. We do have some time for questioning. Leon. Thanks, Gint. Um, out of all of your results, something that struck me, and that's to do with the, let's call it the conservation importance of particularly the Caballos Flats, because that's one of the most important areas in the, in the harbor. Something you showed was, um, on one of the MDS plots, the big difference between the upper Bezazolo Canal stations, B1 and B2, as opposed to B3. Now, in terms of distance, they're not very really far apart. But in terms of the, of the community structure, there's a huge difference. I mean, BZ was closer to the Mazagazi canals than to the BZ. Now, for me, that's very important um, because it means that BZ, the water quality and the community structure at BZ is much closer to, let's call it the marine status or the unaffected um, canals. Mm. Um, what do you think? What's the big reason for that big difference uh, between... BZ, B, uh, B1 and B2, and then B3. Um, well, the BZ3, if I can go back to the... Well, BZ3 is 
is right on the mouth of the, the canal. And um, because of this high tidal exchange, and uh, yeah, sorry, I'm trying to talk in. Because of this high tidal exchange and seawater intrusion, we're finding that because it's near the mouth, the, the, the tidal exchange is sort of clearing that area and bringing in what's, what's coming into the Mzingazi Canal is sort of then linking, sort of bring, brought into the, the mouth area of the Bazolo Canal. And because the nutrients and the fresh water don't sort of reach the mouth area, we don't find that effect on the community there. So that's one of the reasons. Can I make another comment? Yeah. I think the implication of what he's saying is, is that the seawater is actually diluting sufficiently the water coming from the Bezazola Canal and not really affecting the communities in the lower Bezazola Canal and therefore probably not in the Calbios Flats as well, which is good news. Yes. Thank you. Any other questions? Well, if not, thank you very much, Kent. Thank you.